We've had quite a bit of rain the last couple weeks, so I thought I'd do a little progress report here. What's going on? Starns land. The blue pea vine is absolutely thriving, as is the Jatropha. And an increasingly favorite perennial mine, uh, Super Dwarf Alamanda. I forget the hybrid name, but I love it. Just cranks and cranks. Quite a bit happening here as I revamp the yard. This is an heirloom rose called Louis XIV that's very hard to get. That's now in a water-wise container garden I'll be bearing soon. This rose here is a real enigma. Uh, it's called Chromatella. It's about eight years old. It's never flowered. It survived being consumed by mermaid in Biden's for a couple of years. Growing like crazy. And so what I'm going to do is I've deliberately let these side branches get way too long to the point that they obstruct the pathway. But I'm going to grab them in what's called pegging. I'm going to use strips of mini blind, I'm uh, not mini blind, a penny hose, and curve them back towards the rebar. And quite often when you peg a rose, it either makes it bloom or makes it bloom more. It's called a geotropic response uh, due to the angle relative to gravity changing. And I'm hoping it works. Uh, Chromatella makes, is a t it's a tea noisette. And I've never seen it in real life unless I forgot when I, if I saw it in England or in Texas or California. I've never seen it in Florida. But they're big, buxom, uh, beautiful yellow roses. And I think it's a seedling of Gloire de Dijon. So that's one thing that's happening here. Pretty much getting the yard in shape. Still got some progress to go, of course. And of course, Nut Sedge is making a comeback in the pathway despite the carpet. I wish that stuff would go extinct. Here's my skyscraper sunflowers, living up to their name. Luckily, just before the rains uh, started, I gave them a nutrient soup. I made up chicken poop, horse poop, fish emulsion, and some other minerals, um, and they have just taken off. Here's my beloved seagull rose, now setting a huge crop of hips, both hybrid and otherwise. <coughs> uh, this year I did my very first ever controlled pollinations on it. Uh, because it's, I was planted this at sea, 1999, on its own roots. It survived all these years of drought. It survived all the neglect it endured uh, when I couldn't get into the front yard for two years because of mermaid. And it's an obvious parent for my breeding work. Uh, what's interesting is in the past, when I've germinated, open pollinated seeds from it, almost all the seedlings were repeat blooming and somewhat dwarf, even though it's a once blooming monstrous rambler. Uh, and it was very exciting to do a number of controlled pollinations on it. Uh, here's one here that's ripening. I'm pretty sure this is the one where I used a red hybrid tea that Donna gave me. Yes. I'm getting ready to catalog uh, all of the hut hips to see which ones took and I make record of that in my breeding book. There's a green tag back in there. This area here used to be Biden's hell. It's now looking respectable. John and Debbie Butts' is unbelievably productive, vigorous sweet potato is really living up to its name. It makes me wonder if I should have not even planted it here. I keep snipping off uh, the growth that goes in the pathway and planting them elsewhere. Um, I've eaten them. They make very, very good sweet potatoes. And I'm getting ready to sprig another area out back. Here's a late planting of glads. And then this enigma is called Joiner Butterbean. One of my blog readers sent me the seeds. Um, it evolved in the yard of a friend of theirs and they felt that it's, it's a stable hybrid resulting from whippoorwill being pollinated by iron clay. Uh, like my friend Mary Jo said, even when the pods are very young, and I mean really young, like this one here, they're unbelievably tough. Uh, really unpleasant eating raw. But what I found a few days ago is when they get a little bit older and plump, if I cook them like edamame soybeans, they are wonderful. I just I drained, I cooked them for 10 minutes, drained them, and splashed in a little bit of coconut oil and soy sauce, and it was wonderful. And that's why I'm planning on eating them from now on. This tote is hopefully by the end of the summer going to be a big rain barrel once I run gutters up to the roof. I probably need to re-roof the house and go ahead and splurge and address the fact that the... Uh, the paint is flaked uh, and just go ahead and splurge and get, a, get them fully covered. This area here, this is where I brew my nutrient soup. Back here I'm growing a combination of hot peppers, 
hybrid four o'clocks with striped blooms. This is the purple ubi uh, that Andy Furt gave me that makes big round tubers instead of the usual elongated type. And it's consuming my Cocos plumosa palm tree. Over here, I've started chop and drop. Even though it doesn't look pretty, I want to build up a very thick layer here of humus formers. So all these piles of dead branches that resulted from clearing out the yard are going to come over here. Uh, these are open pollinated hot peppers, mixed parentage that should be deadly, deadly, deadly hot. Here's the giant green callaloo that barely survived being transplanted as a seedling that's gone ape. And just like Vicki told me, it's now making thousands of seedlings. She said laughingly a year from now, I'll hate her guts. This is the Cherokee rose that uh, for a couple years, maybe even three, literally kept me out of the, this west side of my house. It, I could not get over here. It was so monstrous. I was going to kill it because it proved sterile as a breeder, but it is so genetically unique. With three leaves and a proven uh, genetic resistance to all disease, I've decided to keep it. I'm going to train it back up onto this rebar and this time keep it more petite and go ahead and try to breed with it once more. This is my sweet almond that Andy Furt gave me. That's a Aloysia something or other. I never can remember the full name and I cannot believe how quickly it has grown here. And the smell is astonishing. I, I cannot even come close to comparing it to any, anything. Uh, very haunting, very sweet. Here's some of the dead twigs that have resulted from clearing, clearing out the yard that I'm going to use uh, to build up that layer over there, actually in all the beds. Uh, waste not, want not. Roses waiting to be planted. There's my, oh, I forget the name. Um, check the tag. It's, it makes a wonderful fruit. It's in the Eugenia family, I believe. Bought this at the Heart Institute. Grumachama. I forgot about that. I love Grumachama fruits. This bed here has for years been a constant source of contagion from nut sedge. So even though I would greatly prefer to have it full of annuals and perennials, I have, after a lot of struggling, I'm going to completely cover it except for the buried roses and buckets uh, with some very dense carpet I, I dumpster dived out back. Uh, I'm just sick to death of weeding and weeding and weeding and weeding and within a two weeks there's just no evidence that I, I pulled up the sedge grass. This bit over here is getting a little out of hand. I've got a few roses in there. I'm going to make it all, all the front yard as I redo it th uh, this time around much less formal. Uh, when I first created it several years ago, there was 170 roses. This is before the drought got so bad. Quite formal and the drought took out many because they refused to water as much as they wanted to. These papayas are a little over two years old. They've borne an incredible number of fruit, but I'm getting ready to take them down because I've planted new colonies of baby papayas all over the place, taken from Caribbean red fruit that I purchased. Here's more bar Barfield White Rambler that's commingled with Marshall Neal. There's some hips on Barfield, which is pretty unusual. Uh, that's another rose that I would have really wanted to breed with because it is so tough. It's completely thornless. It gets no diseases. Uh, but it consistently was a very poor breeder for me. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of these open pollinated hips. I'm getting ready to plant in that water-wise container garden there, my uh, EV rat Hermanos. There's a, a Maggie in a buried water-wise container garden, Abraham Darby, and my long lusted after Rosa Machada, the Graham Stewart Thomas form. There's another view of Chromatella refusing to bloom. This is a collard green that I've now, it's now my absolute favorite hands down. It's called Morris Heading. Wonderful mild sweet flavor. Oh look who's on it. Not good. And then back over to this bed. I planted Francois Giron V, the original plant in 1999 own root. It used to go up this rebar. Well, an equivalent to that rebar. It was actually a, a two by four. Uh, and spanned a similar structure, again, that was made of rebar and uh, pressure-treated lumber. It got consumed and killed by mermaid, who literally went all the way from the mailbox all the way to the house and kept me out of my own front yard for over two years. But luckily, Francois had touched the soil back here, rooted, and I'm now retraining it across this rebar. Um, it's been a very good breeder for me in the past, and I want to go back to breeding with it. I uh, created this uh, angled structure here to get a little bit more rigidity if we get hurricanes. 
So I'm really feeling encouraged that the yard has gone from absolute squalor of mermaid, Cherokee rose, and Bidens from hell to something that's almost presentable. I'm doing it partly to honor my dad because he was unbelievably tidy and I've I feel like I'm a genetic slob and I'm trying to fight back after a lifetime of slovenliness. It'll benefit me and be a nice way to honor my dad. Have a good one, y'all. Bye-bye.